Welcome back to the Gapster channel. My name is Gabby. I am quite excited today because I finally got this uh, DAC, the Gapster D11, finished. It's been a great journey, took a few months, and it sounds amazing. So here it is. It is an amazing DAC. I'm really, really happy with it. Uh, sorry for the clickbait, by the way. Uh, when I said second best in the world, uh, that was just a, to grab people's attention, but probably it is, but I'm sure there's people uh, more capable than myself producing even better stuff than, uh, than this DAC. But as far as I know, and I've heard, it it's really stacks up to the level of the 10 and 15,000 US dollar DAX in sound quality. And it costs a fraction to build. And I'm gonna show you how to build it yourself if you are handy a little bit. But if you've never built anything in your life, please don't start with uh, ultra capacitors. They could be a bit dangerous in terms of shorting them and causing fires and stuff like that. So make sure you know what you're doing uh, before you build anything like that. Uh, if you guys have not subscribed to my channel, please help me out. A uh, little click here will keep the channel going for quite some time. Uh, like the video as early as you can, and that helps the algorithm and it keeps the channel uh, going, as I said. So what makes this DAC uh, special? A uh, few things. Uh, first, it has the shortest pass from the digital to the analog. There's very few electronics in between and that uh, create a better uh, signal because the more electronics you have, the worse things could get. Uh, second, it runs on ultra capacitors, the best power supply worldwide right now. Because technology has improved so well with ultra capacitors that you can actually store quite a bit of energy in them. Not huge, but enough to run a DAC like this for quite some time because it uses very little energy. And the other thing is a lot of shielding. Everything has been shielded. Uh, Raspberry Pi shielded, FIFO Pi shielded, the clocks are shielded, and they're all shielded again. So there's many, many layers of shielding. It also have a state-of-the-art separate power supply, complete separation from the DAC unit. Also, it boosts some amazing uh, medical-grade transformers that are extremely low noise with separate windings for each part of the DAC. And many other little things and tricks here and there and you put them all together and you create something really amazing. There are five uh, ultra capacitor banks. You'll see them one, two, three, four, and five. Uh, these are 3.3 volts and this one is a five volt and they all power. Uh, so each component has separate, has its own separate isolated power supply. And the Raspberry Pi has a continuous uh, power supply that runs on slightly smaller ultra capacitors. And uh, because it requires a lot of power, it cannot run on pure ultra capacitors without being connected. Uh, but that's the dirty part, what we call, once it goes into the FIFO Pi, everything is running on pure mode. Means Pure mode means there's nothing connected to the wall, nothing. So the, it's just the ultra capacitors running the equipment as soon as they're charged and that takes only like two minutes once they're charged they will run the DAC for like three to four hours without uh, having to recharge again and when it wants to recharge it only takes 
two minutes to charge and or three minutes and then it's back and fall again and up to go for another round. I will not take credit for all this and when I say DIY I'm simply putting components that are available on the market and you can do so and I'm going to show you how to do it yourself. Uh, uh, a big credit goes to uh, Ian Canada and uh, you could, uh, he's got a big site on the, uh, on the net, I'll put a link for that below. He designed, he's a brilliant engineer that designed quite a few of the components and he gears towards the DIY market. So you could buy those uh, components, they're freely available to buy. I am not affiliated with him and I do not uh, get anything from him, I uh, buy everything with my own money. So my advice here is based on my experience. Uh, but also there's other parts, uh, the transformers, for example, the four transformers that are made by Ivan uh, Biak and, uh, and he does an amazing uh, job building those uh, four transformers. There are other parts that you could get uh, also freely from places like Mauser or DigiKey or things like that. Uh, the ultra capacitors, you could buy those. I designed a couple of small components myself, uh, trying to tie things together. And also when you're designing something like this, it's a whole different story than you're putting it on a board, a piece of wood, and you're putting plugging pieces together. That's easy and you can do that in an hour. Something like this takes months and months to build, lots of research and picking the right components and, and try and error, many frustrations and many failures. But at the end, it's, things are working great and it's beautiful. This video is gonna be a medium sized one. Uh, I'm gonna give you a fairly good run around on uh, how everything got built, all the parts, there'll be links uh, below and everything. But I will make another video that's gonna be quite long uh, where I show all the little details and how things got built. Because uh, a lot of people don't really have a lot of time and some people wanna know every little thing. So we'll do this way, this way, everybody will be happy. So uh, let's not uh, wait too much. We're gonna step, uh, go into the building phase and uh, go from there. So for those of you that are interested in uh, the core of the system, what's it actually really made of? So I'm just gonna go through it here in pretty good detail. So this is a station pie. All the links are below, of course. So this is a station pie. And uh, what you do is you get your uh, Raspberry Pi. This is a three, uh, 3B, I believe. And uh, this one will go on this side. So on the other side of the uh, station Pi, we are going to plug in the, uh, the 54Q7. This is probably the most important part. It's gonna isolate the noisy computer-based Raspberry Pi and get all the uh, music reclocked with the least jitter possible. And uh, this is gonna go on the cleaner side. So it's gonna go on this side. And then we're gonna put a couple of standoffs here, it's four of them. There we go, they're all four in there. Now, uh, remember I made this uh, little uh, cover for the clock. The copper shields are insulated on the inside with electrical tape, so you don't get two types of metal touching each other and causing any galvanic problems. I put an extender on the uh, GPIO, let's just uh, zoom in on that. So right here, you'll see it's just a little extension. So it's a little bit higher uh, pins. It also just has a little sponge and a dampening thing. So it just holds, the, holds them tight in place so they don't vibrate. And because you don't want those clocks to be moving on any vibrations when you crank the music up and the bass is rattling, you want to make sure that all that is, uh, is pretty solid as can be. So next on top, we're gonna put the uh, dual mono DAC. Uh, uh, the reason we have a dual version is because we would like to run a uh, balanced output, and that's the best way to go. And uh, these are basically uh, the Sabre chips uh, 9038. And uh, the, what's most important is not the chip, is how you uh, basically implement it. 
and how do you get the output out of it. And in our case, we are gonna, f this is a stripped down version. It's got the least amount of components possible, just a strict conversion. And we're gonna feed it with the best power supply. And also the output is we're gonna be using a passive uh, transformer output. And you're gonna get the shortest, least complicated uh, output possible. And that's gonna give you the best sound you can get. And so that's gonna go on top of all that. So flips that around so that goes right in here. And that's gonna go right here. I'll put some screws to lock these out. I'm not gonna bore you. There is a clock, um, master clock link from here to the DAC and that is going to go right in here. That's a super short cable. And that's pretty much it. On top of this, we're gonna get the, uh, the uh, transformers, four transformers. And these are gonna go, there's a little, uh, basically a connector here. That's gonna go in here and that's gonna go out. So what happens is this is gonna go sit in a case. By the way, underneath we have some, uh, some nice uh, dampening, uh, uh, feet. The little feet are made out of sorbosane material. There's six of them here and they're gonna be providing some damping. It'll, all this to keep the clocks from any possible vibrations and also the rest of the system. And that's gonna go in here and, uh, and then this will go on top here and it's gonna plug into there. And that's going to go like this. So everything is encapsulated in here and to keep all the noise away. On the other side where the real noise is from the uh, Raspberry Pi, this another shield here is going to go on top of the whole thing basically. And that's going to go right, right in here. And this goes like this. So now you have a double shielding system on top of the bigger shield outside as well. So all these will pretty much reduce all the noise to the uh, least amount possible. So this is the actual core system. And uh, the four transformers are pretty amazing. They're actually very high quality transformers. And uh, so uh, we're gonna basically put that in and then we're going to start adding all the power supply. So this answers the question to everybody that wants to see like what's, what is the core system running on. So that, that gives you a fairly uh, good idea. All the links are below and you can uh, check them out. And uh, from there you can go into all the uh, PDF documents and check all the manuals on each, each component. So we have the case here and we're going to start putting all the stuff in it. So this is the main core system. So this goes right in there. And then we've got all the ultra capacitors. So these guys have been drained. One, two. Oh, I got them all this time. Number four. Number five. And then we have the uh, linear Pi. This is going to supply basically the uh, power for the Raspberry Pi. So we got all the holes done here. So uh, we're going to start mounting all the parts. So here it is, I got all the uh, ultra capacitors in place, five of them. So this is the uh, relay system that's gonna power the uh, VU meter. Here you can see uh, that I'm designing the faceplate of the DAC. Uh, that makes it a lot easier to actually visualize it before you start cutting things. I designed the uh, face uh, template for the uh, VU meter and uh, then I printed it on transparency paper and uh, cut it and put it into uh, and replaced the original uh, VU meter uh, faceplate. All right, just inserting the 
after cutting about six or seven of them I finally got a good one. It's very precise, there's quite a few little cutouts that have to be exact, but it seems to work fine. All right, here it is with the uh, lit from the back. All right, so here we go. We got quite a few things done. So this is the relay system for the VU meter. Uh, got some nice uh, walnut wood. We're going to use that to uh, build uh, the D11 uh, deck. And that's the piece that I just cut. There you go. Things are starting to take shape. So we've got this uh, building all the wood here. We already almost finished. I already almost finished the uh, the front. This will go here, and this will piece will go in here. As you notice, so it's open in the middle, and there is going to be a piece of glass. That's going to go right, right in here. There just goes here. So here you can see the uh, power supply in it. It's pretty much finished. Finally, it took a very long time and got very complicated. I am not going to talk a lot about the power supply because I have a whole video dedicated to it. So uh, there's a link below about it if you want to know more about it. I just want to mention briefly in here because it is a primary uh, important part of this project. All right, so I decided to mill my own uh, volume knob from a solid uh, piece of brass. I'm going to use that on my lathe and we're just going to cut a slice and shape it into a beautiful piece and put a hole in it and all that. I think you'll make a nice uh, volume knob out of it. Okay, just going to drill a hole into it now. There we go. So this looks much nice and flat on all sides. So now we can we can either polish it or we could leave the lines. So it depends on the look we would like. I kind of like the lines actually, so I might just leave them. There you go. So I've got the uh, display here. It's going to go at the front and uh, we, it's going to be outside the, the chassis and it's going to have, a, it's going to be basically double insulated. So it's going to have another insulation here to keep it away from the rest of the stuff. Okay, all the screws are mounted. So here it is. It's, you know, so that's uh, so making more progress here. Uh, we've got quite a bit of done or some of the wiring done. I'm now I'm doing some of the heavy uh, duty wiring. This is the wiring that's going to go from the batteries to the uh, five for pi and the uh, DAC unit here. And uh, so these I'm using actually, uh, this is uh, using, it's a 12 gauge uh, silver, silver wire and uh, pure silver wire. And uh, it's using as short distances as possible. Uh, 
so we've got uh, so where is the five outer capacitor going some people might be wondering so so you have the DAC the DAC has three uh, three three point three uh, volts uh, individual ones so we're gonna that's three of them right there and uh, the five four pi has two one is five volt and one is three point three and that leaves you with the Raspberry Pi. So Raspberry Pi goes into a, a linear Pi here with another bank of ultra capacitors. The other thing is what we're doing is uh, we're going to twist those uh, positive and negative and that will reduce interference and all right, so I'm making uh, quite a bit of progress here. So we've got a lot of the wiring, if not all of it actually done. Uh, so this is the uh, cover. It actually uh, flips uh, this way. So this is the back of the unit. This is the front, so it flips towards the front. So we're going to uh, close the lid here carefully. First time we're closing it with everything in place. So it will start like this. This thing is in the way. There we go. All right, so we're going to plug it in for the first time and see if it's going to work. The chances are very slim that it will work the first time. There's always something going wrong, but you never know. I did check all the wiring many times to make sure it's okay, but we're gonna, we'll never know till it starts and see if it's all going to work as designed. Uh, this is a DB15. We're going to plug that in and push the power button. Okay, DB15 is plugged in. So powering up, that's good. Ah, that's looking good. We didn't see the low voltage and uh, it's looking good. Looking good. All right, this is the last moment. Uh, putting uh, the four transformers, these are uh, by Ivan, uh, Ivan Biak and uh, and they are, these are the large, larger edition, they are slightly better, especially in a low frequency, just by a tad. In order to tell if my DAC is really performing well and sound, uh, if it sounds really good, I'm using a, a pre-amplifier by Macintosh, the C1100, uh, considered one of the one of the best uh, pre-amplifiers out there. The Luxman uh, M900U, I love this amplifier. We will do a separate video on this one and that also considered one of the best amplifiers out there. And uh, of course my GS11 speakers. Uh, when I compared the sound between my Denafrips Terminator and my DAC, I, uh, I'm, I'm I have to say I'm very, very pleased because I achieved my goal by producing something a little bit better and uh, for a lot less money. And what I like about it is that just the background is so quiet and the, uh, it just has a little bit more air, a little bit better imaging and it just uh, sound really, really nice. And uh, uh, is it really blows it out of the war? No, don't let things, uh, those words uh, fool you. Uh, when you get to this level of high quality DAX, there is no huge differences. The, uh, the, the differences are small and very subtle. Uh, don't expect one DAC to, you know, to outperform the other one by a mile. The, the differences are small. But to produce something to that level and better, for me, that was a great achievement. What, how it all started is a couple of years ago, I wanted to build the best uh, DIY hi-fi system I could. And I wanted to be like the best of the best, like one, like, for example, I started building the, uh, my GS11 speaker that you see here, there's a link of those below. And, uh, they absolutely are amazing. And um, then I built a streamer and I bought a DAC and uh, I bought a few DACs actually and uh, sold a few and I've tried a few from my friends. 
and I finally settled on the uh, Danafrips Terminator for its uh, price value. Uh, I've tried the Corday, the PS Audio, and many, many others, uh, some expensive ones, some very expensive ones that I bought and sold. Uh, the buying things used is always a great thing because you could try many, many things. And uh, I was disappointed with some of them that cost like 15,000 US and then, I mean, they weren't, you know, it was good, but they weren't like worth that money. I hope you guys uh, liked this video. If you like to know more about my uh, GS11 speakers, I'm going to put a link in the corner uh, on top because they're truly amazing and there's a beautiful video about them. And if you want to know about the, uh, um, how this journey started, I'm going to put a link on the first part of the DAC uh, building. And uh, I hope to see you again. Take care and uh, hopefully we'll see you in another video.